So, as we all know, hypoxia is one of the most important concepts in medicine and physiology. If oxygen is not getting to the mitochondria and the cells where it needs to be to cause cellular respiration and energy, then I'm afraid there's nothing, you, you might as well stop right there. There's nothing else you can really do. That's why we treat it first. That's why we put supplemental oxygen on people who are hypoxic, who have low saturations. But let's look at this concept a bit further. So hypoxia is defined as either inadequate oxygen supply or the inability to utilise oxygen at a cellular level. And there are four main causes that you must be aware of. So first on our list is hypoxic hypoxia, where the PaO2 is less than 12 kPa. A low FiO2 can be caused by inadvertent hypoxic gas delivery during anaesthesia or in critical care. It can be caused by hypoventilation, so you literally aren't taking anything in. And that can be caused by opioid-induced apnea or hypoventilation. Diffusion impairments such as that seen in pulmonary edema and pulmonary fibrosis, where the oxygen isn't actually able to pass through the alveolus and into the bloodstream. You can also see hypoxic hypoxia in ventilation perfusion mismatch disorders such as COPD, asthma and lower respiratory tract infections. It can also be caused by shunt, which is for example atelectasis causes an intrapulmonary shunt as the surface area is not there in the lungs because it has collapsed down. Next on our list is anemic hypoxia where you'll see a normal PaO2 but there's an adequate oxygen carrying capability. So there's low circulating haemoglobin levels such as in acute and chronic anemias. And you'll have normal circulating haemoglobin levels but a reduced ability to carry oxygen such as that seen in carbon monoxide poisoning. So for example if somebody had haemorrhaged out all of their blood they actually just don't have the cells to carry the oxygen. There's not a ventilation issue so it's not the lungs causing this it's actually the transport issue. Thirdly we have stagnant hypoxia where you'll see a normal PaO2 and oxygen carrying ability but reduced tissue and organ perfusion and this can be seen in cardiogenic shock. The reason it's seen in cardiogenic shock is because you're not mounting the blood pressure to actually transport the blood that you have oxygenated in the lungs around the body and when it is transported it will have an inadequate perfusion pressure to perfuse your organs and tissues properly. Finally, and probably least commonly, is histotoxic hypoxia, where you'll see a normal PaO2, normal oxygen carrying capacity, and tissue perfusion, but there's an inability of the tissues to utilise oxygen at the cellular level, which is the mitochondrial level. So mitochondria can't actually use the oxygen, you're supplying it, and that can be seen in cyanide poisoning, which is a direct metabolic toxin. So for this next section, you're going to need to have watched our video on the oxygen haemoglobin dissociation curve, or know it really well already. These are graphs showing how the oxygen haemoglobin dissociation curve looks in these different types of hypoxia. So let's look at the graph of hypoxic hypoxia. You'll see that the arterial saturations um, are less and the actual PaO2 is less. It should be 13.3, it's actually 7.2 and that's due to the actual physical lack of oxygen in the blood. You'll also see that the SVO2 is reduced with venous desaturation at less than 75%. This is because oxygen extraction at the tissue level will happen even at a, at a PaO2 of 7.2 so whenever it's extracting oxygen your desaturated venous blood will have a lower kPa of oxygen. Looking at anemic hypoxia such as in hemorrhage you'll see that the PaO2 remains normal i.e. greater than 13.3 kPa. You'll see that the global oxygen delivery is reduced due to reduced oxygen content result is an in increased oxygen extraction and venous desaturation. So you'll see that the PaO2 is normal, 13.3, but you'll see that the venous saturation is lower because there's a higher oxygen extraction. So graph 3 is stagnant hypoxia. You'll see that the PaO2 is normal, the PVO2 is normal, and tissues and oxygen are not receiving the oxygenated blood due to a perfusion failure, such as in cardiogenic shock, like we've said, where the pump isn't working. Finally, in histotoxic hypoxia, you'll see that the PaO2 is normal, 13.3, but cells are unable to utilise the oxygen like we've said, so there's high venous saturations because the oxygen extraction is a lot less because the mitochondria are not using up your arterial oxygen as much. Lastly, we're going to look at how to calculate the oxygen content of blood. So oxygen is carried in the blood in two main ways. It's either combined with haemoglobin or it's dissolved in plasma. Oxygen content is calculated by combining the proportion of oxygen bound to haemoglobin with that that's dissolved in plasma. Let's look at the equation even closer then. So we've got oxygen content equals the bound oxygen plus dissolved oxygen. And if we look at the components that make up bound oxygen, see we've got haemoglobin, this value of 1.34 and the saturation of arterial oxygen. And then if we look at the dissolved oxygen, you can see it's PaO2 
multiplied by 0 0.0225. So let's look at these funny figures a bit more. This 1.34 is actually called Hofner's constant, and this is there because each gram of haemoglobin combines with 1.34 mils of oxygen. So let's look at this other funny number, 0 0.0225. We multiply the PaO2 by this number because this number is the mils of oxygen per deciliter in every kPa of oxygen. So let's do a worked example. If you have a haemoglobin of 15, saturations of 100% and a PaO2 of 13.3, you would take your haemoglobin, multiply it by 1.34 and multiply it by, yes, you've got 100%, but you need to change that in, in to express it as a percentage. You need to put one for 100% or 0.75 for 75%. And you add it to 13.3, multiply by that number 0.0225. You'll then get 20.1 plus 0.3. And that will obviously give you 20.4 mils of oxygen per deciliter. And as I've already said, if you're going to take the venous saturations of oxygen, you find out the venous saturations are usually about 75%. You change that number to 0 0.75 and you do the equation again. If you were to take the oxygen content, such as 20.4 of arterial blood, and multiply it by the cardiac output, that will give you the amount of oxygen delivered. You can then calculate the amount of oxygen uptaken by the body by using oxygen delivery minus the oxygen return. This will give you the mils per minute of oxygen used. A normal consumption of oxygen in a healthy patient is about 250 mils per minute. And that's why modern ventilators won't allow you to go below this value whenever it comes to supplying oxygen to the patient. Join us on the website propofology.com or Twitter for more information. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notifications button on this channel to find out when our new videos are coming out.